June 6, 1944, dawn breaks over the churning waters of the English Channel. 160,000 Allied troops crammed into landing craft face a formidable steel curtain, Nazi defenses lining the French coast. This is D-Day, the largest amphibious assault in history, and our destination, Omaha Beach. We return to Omaha Beach not to glorify war, but to remember the sacrifice, the human cost of liberty. The heroes of D-Day, fallen and living, remind us that freedom is not free. It is bought with blood, with courage, with unwavering resolve. We will remember them. We will remember them. Omaha Beach was approximately six miles long and it was separated into sectors. Charlie, Dog Green, Dog White, Dog Red, Easy Green, Easy Red, Fox Green and Fox Red. It also had natural exits off the beach called D1, D3, E1, E3 and F1. But remember the enemy had positioned strong points overlooking those exits. We'll come back to the strong points in a minute. But first, let's start at the beginning. On the morning of June 5th, Eisenhower, assured by Chief Meteorologist James Martin Stagg of a break in the weather, announced, OK, we'll go. Within hours, an armada of 3,000 landing craft, 2,500 other ships, and 500 naval vessels, escorts and bombardment ships, began to leave English ports. That night, 822 aircraft, carrying parachutists or towing gliders, roared overhead to the Normandy landing zones. They were a fraction of the air armada of 13,000 aircraft that would support D-Day. At 6.30 a.m., the deafening roar of naval guns shattered the pre-dawn stillness. Bombers plastered the German defenses, but many bunkers remained untouched. As landing craft approached the shore, German machine guns unleashed a deadly hail of fire. Along the shoreline lurked hidden concrete fortresses known as Widerstands Nester, German strong points. Imagine this, towering cliffs dotted with machine gun nests, barbed wire snaking across the sand, and pillboxes bristling with enemy troops. These weren't Hollywood props. These were the teeth that Omaha Beach bared at the advancing allies. Each strong point, numbered WN1 to WN74, was a self-contained fortress boasting impregnable concrete walls up to three meters thick, designed to withstand artillery barrages, fiendish firepower machine guns and mortars strategically placed to cover every inch of the beach and interconnected tunnels allowing the Germans to move, resupply and adapt to the attack. Why were these strong points so vital to the Germans? Omaha Beach wasn't just a landing zone, it was a gateway to Nazi-occupied Europe. The Germans knew if the Allies breached these strong points, the floodgates would open. They were the linchpin, the Achilles heel of the entire defense. So, how hard were they to crack? Imagine yourself charging a concrete wall while bullets crackle around you. That's what the D-Day forces faced. Initial bombardments barely scratched the thick walls. Tanks bogged down in the sand, making them easy targets. Every inch of the advance was a desperate fight, a brutal tug of war against steel and death. Men stumbled out of the boats, waist deep in water, bullets kicking up spurts of foam around them. Barbed wire snagged them, drowning many before they even reached the beach. Exploding shells sent body parts flying. The sand churned to crimson mud. Yet they kept pushing forward, man after man, body after body. Slowly, agonizingly, the tide turned. Strong points one by one were neutralized or overrun. Their guns fell silent, their concrete carcasses testament to the ferocity of the battle. Reinforcements arrived, 
breaching the German lines at critical points. With each agonizing meter gained, the dream of liberation took shape. The strong points of Omaha were slain, not by magic, but by the unrelenting spirit of men who wouldn't be broken. Their courage, their ingenuity, and their sacrifice. These are the weapons that cracked the concrete and paved the way for freedom. By June 7th, the beachhead consisted of three separate sectors, that of the British and Canadians, between Caen, not taken, and Bayeux, that of the US V Corps, between port en bessin and Saint-Pierre-du-Mont, and that of the US V Corps, west of the Via River behind Utah Beach. Here we can see Omaha Beach back then, compared to how it looks today. Now it's time for three fun facts you might not have known about D-Day. The term D-Day is used by the armed forces to refer to the beginning of an operation. The D stands for day, meaning it's actually short for Day-Day, which is nowhere near as catchy. Before the Allied attack in June 1944, there would have been many D-Days. However, it was so iconic that it came to be used solely when referring to the beginning of Operation Overlord. The D-Day invasion was actually planned for the 5th of June. However, in true British fashion, the weather was too bad for the ships to set sail. It was therefore postponed until the day after. As the invasion was the first of its kind, there was no existing equipment with which to carry it out. Not only were the Mulberry Harbors invented, so were the iconic landing crafts. These had a ramp that dropped down into the sea, meaning troops didn't have to scramble over the side to get out. On Thursday 6th of June 2024, Many heads of state, veterans and officials will commemorate the 80th anniversary, the D-Day landings and the Battle of Normandy. Remember the heroes, remember the sacrifice, remember that freedom comes at a cost and never let the echoes of their bravery fade.